Hello world, welcome back. Um, I've got a bit of a confession to make. Unfortunately, um, I recorded today's video um, and uh, I did the entire thing and solved day 13 of the advent of code without the microphone turned on. So that's spoiled it really. <laughs> um, it's not a lot I can do about it. I mean, you know, I'm not going to go back and pretend to solve it, um, you know, because that seems that seems ridiculous. So um, because you might want to know how I solved it, I thought I would describe how I solved it, show you my code so you can see that. Um, but then, uh, yeah, we'll just put it behind us. I think what I might do actually is um, just get some other programming problem open. Um, perhaps we'll look at Code Wars and pick out a nice a nice puzzle from there to solve instead. But no, unfortunately, day 13 is, uh, is, is not an option. Anyway, it was about mirrors. <laughs> so, so the idea was that there were a bunch of mirrors and uh, we were given uh, arrangements like this of, uh, of symbols. And there's actually two arrangements here. So these are two separate arrangements. And for each one, there is a mirror somewhere in that arrangement, which means that one half of the arrangement is a reflection of the other half. Um, and it could be a vertical mirror reflecting left, right, or it could be a horizontal mirror reflecting up, down. Um, so in this example here, you might be able to spot that there is a, uh, a point here where these two lines are the same and the ones on the other side. So that one is the same as that one, and that one is the same as that one. So there is a horizontal mirror between these two lines reflecting everything. Now notice that this line down here isn't reflected. It would be off the edge, so that's fine. You can have reflections that are off the edge. We just ignore those lines, basically. So we're gonna look at them, and we need to work out where is the mirror. Is it a horizontal mirror? Is it a vertical mirror? And which row or column is it on? Um, so that is the problem. And so my my actual data, my actual puzzle data, was quite long. There were lots and lots of them, lots and lots of these mirrors. And I had to go through each one and work out, first of all, does it have a vertical mirror, in which case, in which column? And if it hasn't, it's got a horizontal mirror, in which case, which row? And then it did some maths, like multiplying those numbers together or st stuff like that. So here was my, uh, I mean, it, it, it was it was okay. It was fine as a problem. Um, my idea was that I would sort of brute force it. So uh, for example, for this one, I would say, well, let's try every row and see if there's a horizontal mirror um, on every row. So starting from uh, this first one here, I would say, uh, is that exactly the same as the line underneath it? In which case there would be a mirror between them. But in that case, there clearly isn't. So I would then move on to this row and say, is that line exactly the same as the one underneath it? And it clearly isn't. So then I would get to this row and I'd say, ah, right, okay, this is exactly the same as the row underneath it. The technique that I used for that was I actually took one character at a time and I said, is this, is this character the same as that character? And then is this character the same as that character? As soon as I found some that didn't match, then I could just ignore the rest of the row. So while, while they were still being the same, I would carry on, but then eventually I'd just stop. Assuming that these two rows are the same, I then had a variable called distance and I would expand the distance one more step. So I was then looking at ones that were one away from that point and I would do the same job. Are these the same? Are these the same? Are these the same? Then I would expand the distance another step and look one line further away. Is that the same as, uh, as where am I looking? As that? Oh, actually on this one, it isn't, that isn't the mirror, is it? It's not a horizontal mirror. I was wrong because that does not match this. This one was a vertical mirror. It's actually between these two columns on this one here. I think that one was a vertical mirror. 
Um, yeah, because those are the same, and then two apart is the same, and three apart is the same. Anyway, that was effectively my algorithm. So my vertical mirror checker went through each column, and then it had this distance variable, which was how far away from that test column I was looking. I went all the way along the whole uh, the whole row, checking whether things were the same. If at any point two things that I thought should have been the same were not equal, then I said valid is false, and I effectively just ditched that particular um, that particular column, moved on to the next one. Um, so either this find vertical would return the number of the vertical mirror, or if there was no vertical mirror, then it would return none. And then I do the same for horizontal. So again, it would either return the position of a horizontal mirror, or it would return none. And so all I had to do for my program was go through every set. So the test data was a whole bunch of sets, a whole bunch of you know arrangements, go through each one, Put it into the find vertical function to see if there was a vertical mirror. Stick it into the find horizontal, see if there's a horizontal mirror. And then if there was a vertical mirror, I was adding it onto the total. If there was a horizontal, I was timesing it by 100 and add, adding it onto the total. So that, that's what the instruction said to do. And then that was, that was my answer. Part one, nice and easy. Part two added an extra complication, as it always does. So part two said, Ah, there's actually a problem with these. These are not the correct arrangements. There is a smudge somewhere on each arrangement so that what looks like a dot is actually a hash or possibly the other way around. A hash should be a dot. So I had to reverse one symbol in each arrangement and that would give me a different mirror. In fact, I think we've probably discovered it on this one. I think for this one, that became a horizontal mirror when this symbol was turned into a hash, or possibly when that one was turned into a dot. I mean, it would it would be the same, wouldn't it? So by making one little change, you get a different mirror, is the answer. Uh, and the, the vertical one is no longer valid. Um, but in fact, it, sometimes the original mirror is still valid. So in that case, we had to discard the original mirror value and only look for a new one. So we had to find a new mirror location. Um, so part two was pretty much the same, but what I was doing was I was sending the old value. Um, where are we? Yes, yeah. so I was sending each set to the two functions to find the old vertical and horizontal. And then I was doing a lovely brute force. I was trying every row and every column, and I was changing every single symbol to the opposite of what it was. So if it was a dot, I turned it into a hash. Otherwise, I turned it into a dot. Then I ran it into the find vertical, find horizontals again to get the new mirror locations. and. If they were different, then I was then doing the maths with the new arrangements. So, and that worked. That worked. Um, oh yeah, I had to remember to put it back. So once I changed, once I checked one symbol and flipped it, I had to put it back to what it was before. Move on to the next one, flip it, check it, put it back again, go to the next one, and so on. So it was it was pretty quick. Um, can I can I run this? Uh, let me just see if I can run this. Uh, okay, oh, I'm actually debugging it, but that's fine. So it went chug a chug a chug. It had to look through quite a lot, and it had to do um, it had to do brute force. So it took a little while to do. But it eventually came up with a number. And it was the right number. So there we go. That was day 13. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Um, but unfortunately, no microphone. So I couldn't do it. 
So I'll tell you what I'll do. I will um, just pause this and we'll go and find um, an advent of code. Um, not an advent of code, a code wars problem. And uh, we'll, we'll solve that instead because I, I wouldn't want to do you out of some cozy coding. So let's do that. Right, here we go then. So I've picked one called um, Organize a Round Robin Tournament. Um, let's uh, let's just zoom in on these instructions. Can we do that? Can we do that? No. That's the sample tests. Don't want that. <laughs> okay. You are organizing a soccer tournament, so you need to build a matches table. The tournament is composed by 20 teams. It's a round robin, all play all, so it has 19 rounds. Uh, each team plays once per round. Each team confront the others once in the tournament. Each match does not repeat. Okay, so every team's going to play every other team once. So we have one fewer matches than we have teams. Okay, your mission is to implement a function, build matches table, that receives the number of teams, which is always a positive and even number. Right, so there's never going to be um, uh, like a buy situation where one, one person has to sit out um, in a week. Each line of the matrix represents one round. Each column represents one match. The match is represented as an array tuple with two teams. Why can't I scroll on this? Okay, there we go. Just reset my camera. <laughs> I, I want to be able to see these buttons down the bottom here. So, Okay. So, um, so if we are sent a four, build matches table four, that means there's four teams. So the first round would be one, two, three, four. One plays two, three plays four. Then one plays three and two plays four. Then one plays four and two plays three. Okay. Don't care about the order of the teams in the match, nor the order of the matches in the rounds. And I can use a preloaded function called print table to debug your results. Okay, well, I don't really know how this is done. This is obviously something that is done frequently, um, but I've never, I've never done it. I have organised tournaments before, but I've never organised a round robin before. So I don't know if there's like if you can just wing it, or if there's like a standard algorithm for doing these. So let's just wing it. <laughs> Let's just wing it and see. So I need to build a matches table. So matches is empty. And I, uh, so I'm going to, the number of rounds uh, for round num, oh, round num in range. Uh, so we're gonna, it's going to be one less than the number of teams. So going up to teams minus one. And for each one of those, we're going to append um, uh, an empty, an empty list, and then in there we're going to put pairings. So, um, well, on that first one, um, the first item in the list was who player one plays against. So player one played against two. And then in the next one, they played against three. And then in the next one, they played against four. So it's like player one gets to play with the, the next person and then the one after that and then the one after that. So in the first round, they play against someone one space away. And then in the next round, it's two spaces away. And it's three spaces away. Well, how about if I just take each person and say, right, find the first person in the list who you haven't played. That's who you're going to play. So person one will play against, well, they're teams, aren't they? Team one will play against team two, because that's the first one that we find. Um, team two, I won't have to do it with, because they've already got a, 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 an opponent. Team three, the first person they find that they haven't played will be team four. So that will do the first round. Next time around, we'll go back to team one. We'll say, right, well, you've already played two, so the next available one is three. Yeah, okay. So for 
team one, um, we're going from one to the number of teams um, plus one. So this is like the first half of the pairing. We're going to go through all the other ones in the pairing for um, team two in in the same range. Now, if, obviously, if T1 equals team two, then we're not going to pair a team up with itself. So we'll say continue. But if it's not, ah, now we need to know who they have played already because we don't want them to play the same person twice. So let's have a list of who people have played before. Played before. So we'll have a list in here, which is going to be um, zero. Um, so to start with, um, play, no, no, not zero. We'll, we'll, make it, we'll make it an empty list. So an empty list for every team. So we'll say if T2 is not in played before for this team, T1, then we're going to make a pairing between T1 and T2. And we're going to add it to this round of the matches. Matches, minus one, append, and we'll put in a little tuple of T1 and T2. Uh, we will need to add T2 into T1's played before list, and we'll also put T1 into T2's played before list to record the fact that they've now played each other. So T1, no. So played before T1, um, append T2 and the other way around as well. Played before T2, append T1. So they shouldn't play each other again. Um, and then once we've done that, once we've made that match, we will, um, well, in that case, we're done with this team, aren't we? So done equals false done equals true break out of this loop and then if done break out of no go on to the next team in that loop so we move on to the next t1 And then at the end of that, um, return matches. That might work. Let me let me test it and see. Test. What are we getting? Oh, okay. It worked when there were just two teams. And it worked for one of the 14 tests, but it didn't work for the others. Right, why is that? What's going on? Um, what did it say about debugging? You can use the preloaded function print table to debug your results. Okay, was well, that going to print out? It's going to print out my match table, is it? Uh, print table matches. Let's see what I'm what I'm getting. Right. So with four teams So round one, um match team one played team two. Oh hang on, team two can't play against team three because they're already playing. Oh, right, okay, so so we don't want to do a T1 if they've already played in this in this round. Okay, so um, P1 
played this round. Let me just zoom in a bit. So at the start of each round, I'm going to have a list of all the teams who have played this round. And so when I pick out a T1, I'm going to say if T1 is in played this round, then I'm going to move on to the next team because they've already played. So they, we don't need to find an opponent for them. So I can put both T1 and T2 into played this round. Okay, so we shouldn't find that they're playing twice per round now. Okay, let's test that. Okay, right, still not working. So in round one, one is playing against two, and three is playing against one, and four is playing against one, but that Right. <laughs> okay. So I also don't want to pick out a T2 if they've played this round. Right. So don't pick an opponent if you've played them the before or if they have played this round. Okay, we might be getting there. <laughs> Test again. Okay, completed all the tests, excellent. So that part, oh, look at that. That's very satisfying. Right, let's try it with the hidden tests. Okay. Hmm. Ooh, okay. So it was all right with these little ones, but when we got to 20 teams, it stopped working. Why is that? Can I zoom in on this output? No, I can't. Mm. It looks like it's running out of map matches. Hang on. So round one. Can I expand this out? I can't I can't make this column any wider. That's annoying. No, don't seem to be able to make this column any wider. Maybe sort that out, Code Wars people. Maybe there's or maybe I'm using it wrong. Okay, so the first match, 1v2, 3v4, 5v6, 7v8, that all seems fine. Okay. Next round, 1v3, 2v4, 5v7, 6v8, that all seems fine. Round 3, 1v4, okay, so why does it start to run out? Why are these ones not doing anything? 1v5, 2v6, right, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Right. Oh, right. So the only teams that are left are 17, 18, 19, 20, and they've already played each other. So because all of the low numbers are being pitched against each other, by the time we're up here, there's no one for 17 to play who they haven't already played. They need to be playing someone lower down. Lower down in the in the number list. But but that's not going to happen because this is going to be pitching people against people. It's taking like the the lowest number it can find and it's it's not it's never going to look at the end ones. Hmm. How am I going to solve that? Should I look start looking at the end, at the other end? Should they be looking opposite to them? And then sort of converge? So one looks at 20, and then two looks at 19, and they go, that's just probably just going to have the same problem, isn't it? 
That's probably just going to have the same problem. Hmm. Well, that is that is how I would well, how would I arrange it? So, if I was arranging a tournament, what would I do? I'd probably. Well, I said I'd probably do that, but it wouldn't work, would it? Eventually, I would realise. So, when I got to week three, and I and I try or well, week four, and I tried using this method, I would say, "Oh, hang on a minute." There's now there's no one left for 17. So I would break my rule. I would say, okay, fine, fine. Four's not going to play eight. Four's now going to play against 17. And eight are going to play against 18. I'd, I'd have to go in and manually break the rules. To make it work. But that, you can't write an algorithm like that. Just fiddle with it until it works. Well, I suppose you can. You could do like a, a sort of um, an algorithm that random just like mutates it until it works. But there's got to be a way. People have been doing round robin tournaments for ages without having you know massively recursive algorithms. People have been doing it by hand for a long time, thousands of years. I expect <laughs> the Greeks were probably doing round robin tournaments. So there must be a simple thing that I don't know about how it works. So I'm going to go and look it up. <laughs> I'm going to go and look up how to organise a round robin tournament. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll program it. I won't look up the code. I'll just look up how, like how did the Greeks do round robin tournaments. And then I'll, I'll try and program that. I'll see you once I've done it. Well, once I've found out how it works anyway. Right, so I've looked into it and um, I think I might know how to approach it. So apparently the way that you do a round robin is you fix one team in position and then you rotate all the rest. So first match, you play one against six, two against five, three against four, for example. Then you leave one where it is and then you just move all the other ones around. So um, two will go over there. So it will be two, three, four, five, six, right? You shuffle everything around. Doesn't matter which direction, I guess. Um, so I think that that should do it. Then, then two would go there. So we go two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And so I think that means that everyone plays everyone else. Um, yeah, so let's try that. We'll go back over to here. We will delete all of this, everything. Goodbye, algorithm. <laughs> it made sense at the time. Um, but okay, so, so how can we do this then? So I'm gonna have Player one be my fixed one. And all the rest need to go into a list. So, um, hmm. yeah. So, others equals i for i in range um, going from two up to teams plus one. So that's all the others. <clears throat> okay. And okay, for round in range uh, teams minus one. So we're going to go through each round. So what are we going to add into our into our matches table? So matches append an empty list. And we're going to put team one against hmm, against which team? So if we start, let's put it back to how it was to begin with. Four, five, six. So if I've got a list, 
Actually, no, it starts at two, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we're going from two up to there. Right, okay. So if I get... So the others list has got in it two, three, four, five, six. That's my others list. So in fact, I'm always going to be matching with the same position in this list. That's going to be with the last one. And then I'm going to match that one with the second to last one and that one with the third to last one. And then when I rotate them, it's the same positions that I'm interested in. That's always going to be with the last one. That's going to be with the second to last one. That's going to be with the third to last one. That would be whatever, whatever, um, well, half the size of my list, wouldn't it? Okay. So that goes with minus one. That, that number one goes with minus two. Number two goes with minus three. And so on. Okay. So one goes with minus one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So matches brackets minus one dot append. Uh, we're going to add in one and whatever is in the final position of others. Others minus one. Then for i in range going from two up to. We don't want to go all the way to the end. We only want to go up to hmm. Now hang on a second, because we're doing it with the with the positions in others, aren't we? So we're going from zero, zero, one. Uh, so here others is five long. So if I divide it in half, and I'm just going to get that top row, aren't I? Zero and one. To, mm. the length of others divided by 2 let's, let's just see if that works I'm just going to print i for now let's just see what prints out round I'm just going to try running this and see what prints out no I've got an invalid syntax should be a comma. Okay, so round zero. Mm. Hmm. And why is it only printing? Zero. So when there are four teams, we've got zero. Why is it not giving me? Right, let's do it with just four teams. One, two. Oh, no, that's correct. If I was doing it with four teams, then it would look like this. So others would just be two, three, and four. So I would only be having to find a match with the with position zero. OK. Mm -hmm. What if Teams was 6? I'm just going to override this and have Teams be 6. Right. Okay. Then it's doing 0 and 1. So that's correct. It would be doing trying to find a match between 0 and 1. That's correct. Okay. So we just want to add on the team. So matches... Minus one, 
append the team that's in others i and the team that is in the others minus two minus one minus two minus i so when I'm looking at zero then I'm going to have others minus two the second to last one and when I'm when when I'm at I when I'm at one it's going to be minus two minus one which is minus three yeah so when I've got six when I've got six people So this is, uh, that is others zero, that's others one. And I want to match it with others minus one, minus two, minus three. Yeah, I think that's correct. And do that for each round. Right, so now I just need to rotate the others thing. So once I finish that, I'm gonna rotate the others list. So I'm gonna take one off the end and add it to the beginning. Or I could take one off the beginning and add it to the end. I'll take it off the beginning and add it to the end. I will say others dot append brackets others dot pop zero. So that will take the first one off the list and add it on to the end. And it will do that in each round. What do we get? Hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, let's not print that so I'm getting an error list object is not callable oh, okay that should be others square brackets minus two minus I okay so that passes those tests let's try it on the hidden tests again and it passes all of them there we go well all I needed to do was find out how to organize a round robin tournament, which I guess I should have known because that is sort of sort of the name of the <laughs> name of the challenge. But there we go. We solved it. That wasn't too bad, was it? No, it was not. Well, thank you for joining me and uh, apologies for messing up the advent of code. Um, but the good news is we're back on track. So in the next one in uh, Cozy Coding 14, we will be actually on day 14 of the advent of code 2023. Hopefully I'll remember to turn the microphone on. In fact, hopefully I've got the microphone on now. Oh, I really hope so. I'll, I'll, I'll f oh, hang on, I need to submit this first of all. Submitting your solution. Done, lovely. Okay, well join me next time. Thank you, goodbye.